great to be here. It really is. I love my job, and I love uh, being here performing for you. And I love my job. It's the greatest job in the world for one very simple reason, and it's not the sharing of laughter and all that horse shit. Uh, it's the fact that I don't have a boss. <laughs> Picture that, if you will, and then envy me. Because every job I ever had with a boss, man, always harassed, you know? Hicks, how come you're not working? I go, there's nothing to do. Well, you pretend like you're working. Well, why don't you pretend I'm working? <laughs> yeah, you get paid more than me, you fantasize. <laughs> pretend I'm mopping, knock yourself out. I'll pretend they're buying stuff. We can close up. I'm the boss, now you're fired. How's that for a fantasy, my friend? <laughs> you like that? Good. I don't know. I got a bad attitude, man. I don't have a bad attitude. I got a great attitude. I just got a classic face that I don't know what's wrong with my face, but people I don't even know walk up to me out of the blue and go, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Well, it takes more energy to frown than it does to smile. Yeah, you know, it takes more energy to point that out than it does to leave me alone. <laughs> Yeah, really. So why don't you get out of my face and watch me fucking really start smiling. <laughs> I hate you. So uh, I'm up here and it's Canada and I'm thinking, you know, Canada, cold. Uh, huskies, you know, and I'm wearing, if you notice, the black cotton fucking turtleneck. <laughs> Because, ladies and gentlemen, apparently summertime means the same thing even in the French provinces. <laughs> what are you, a fucking idiot? It's summertime, you fucking moron. That's it. During the wintertime, the Chapri girls are wearing parkas. You lucked out. They're in parkas and big boots. Hey, they're socks. <laughs> I don't like the summertime because everyone goes to the beach. I don't understand the beach. The beach, the beach, the beach. Let's go to the beach. Oh, I love the summertime. It's so warm, finally. Let's go to the beach. Woo! What's the fucking deal with the beach? I don't get it. It's where dirt meets water, all right? Is that that fucking amazing to you? I got a bathtub and an imagination. I'm staying indoors this summer. That way I can listen to music I like. Maybe I'm just jealous, man. Everyone at the beach is perfect, you know? Tan, white teeth. I got white skin, tan teeth. <laughs> Not my environment. You put me under a neon beer light, I look pretty cool. <laughs> you know my problem, I'm so pale, man. I take my shirt off at the beach, it's like a fucking prism, man. People are just, Bill, put your shirt back on. We can't find our towels. <laughs> All these moths are bumping into me. What did moths bump into before electric light bulbs were invented? That's what I want to know. Well, the light bulb really screwed the moth up, didn't it? First light bulb ever turned on. Billions of moths. <laughs> hey, 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 what's the fucking deal? It's a light bulb. Chill out. What did they do before? They're moths on the way to the sun right now going, it's going to be worth it. <laughs> Fuck it, let's go find Hicks. All right. <laughs> okay. I just don't fit in, man. I don't fit in anywhere. That's my problem. You know my problem? I watch too much news. I don't know if you've ever, ever, ever sat and watched CNN longer than, say, 20 hours in one day. <laughs> I've got to cut that out. You ever watch CNN headline news for any length of time? It's the most depressing fucking thing you will ever do. War, famine, death, AIDS, homeless, recession, depression. War, famine, death, AIDS. <laughs> then you look out your window, it's just... <laughs> Where is all this shit happening, man? <laughs> Ted Turner is making this shit up. Jane Fonda won't sleep with him. He runs to a typewriter. By 1992, we will all die of AIDS. Read that on the air. I don't get laid. Nobody gets laid. <laughs> oh, 
mean, I'm writing Jane Fonda. Will you fuck this guy so we can get some good news, please? I want to see a well-laid Ted Turner newscast. Hey, it's all going to work out. Here's sports. <laughs> a big stupid grin. <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm getting laid right now. Fuck it. Hey. So I'm from the States, as you can tell by my complete lack of sophistication, but that's okay. Because I've greased my hair and I'm a little fucking poet tonight, all right? I'm the little dark poet. That's who I am. And during the, we had this uh, big war thing happen. I don't know if you caught any of that, but uh, it was a very stressful time for me, the war. I'll tell you why. I was in the unenviable position of being for the war, but against the troops. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> not the most popular stance I've ever taken on an issue, I must say. I don't, I don't choose wisely always, and yet I'm committed. So first of all, this needs to be said. There never was a war. How can you say that, Bill? Well, a war is when two armies are fighting. <laughs> so you see, right there, I think <laughs> we can all agree that it wasn't exactly a war. <laughs> and Bush, President Bush, a complete surprise, he turned into a demon man. When he was first president, they called him the wimp president. I mean, this was the cover of Newsweek. Wimp president. Apparently, this stuck in this guy's craw. The guy turned into a fucking demon, man. We surrender. Not good enough. But we run away. Too little, too late. We're having way too much fun. Those guys were in hog heaven out there. You understand, man? They had a big weapons catalog opened up. What's G12 do, Tommy? <laughs> well, it says here it destroys everything but the fillings in their teeth. <laughs> Helps us pay for the war effort. Well, shit, pull that one up. Pull up G12, please. Cool. What's G13 do? <laughs> Weapons for all occasions. And everyone got excited about the technology. And I guess it was pretty incredible watching a missile fly down an air vent. Pretty unbelievable. But couldn't we feasibly use that same technology to shoot food at hungry people? You know what I mean? Fly over Ethiopia. There's a guy that needs a banana. Shh. Stealth banana. <laughs> Smart fruit. <laughs> and I watched the Iraqi technology. Man, I've never felt so good about myself. I look at fucking bell bottoms in my closet and go, that ain't that fucking bad, man. <laughs> what was the technology they were buying? Where do they, do they still, are those available still now? Or where do they, they could get harder shit off the streets of New York right now, man. <laughs> Don't you think one of the key prerequisites of a weapon system is, I don't know, the ability to aim the fucking thing? Is that, am I, was that, I don't know a lot about the military, and yet I feel that would be key. <laughs> what was the scud? It was like launching a station wagon at people, man. <laughs> some Buick flying through the air, some Iraqi driving. Allah! Watch out, here come one of them Buick scuds. Watch out, watch out, up oh, in the ocean. Those things are so hard to steer. <laughs> Allah, bloop, bloop, bloop. Allah, bloop, 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 bloop. Allah, bloop, bloop, bloop. Allah, Allah, Another Buick's good. I guess the most amazing thing about the war, obviously the disparity in the casualties. Iraq, 150,000 casualties. USA, 79. 
let's go through those numbers again. Uh, they're a little baffling at first glance. Iraq, 150,000 USA. 79. 79. 79. Does that mean if we had sent over 80 guys, we still would have won that fucking thing, or what? Just one guy in a ticker tape parade. I did it, hey. Once again, though, it was watching the CNN, man, that blew it all. Man, all the anxiety. Remember how it started? They kept talking about the elite Republican guard and these hushed tones. Remember that? Like they had the bogeyman, you know? Yeah, we're doing well, but we have yet to face the elite Republican guard. Yeah, like these guys are 10 feet tall, <laughs> desert warriors. <laughs> Never lost a battle. We shit bullets. <laughs> well, after two and a half months of continuous carpet bombing and not one reaction at all from these fuckers, they became simply the Republican Guard. <laughs> not nearly as elite as we may have led you to believe. And after another month of continuous bombing and not one reaction at all, they went from the elite Republican guard to the Republican guard to the Republicans made this shit up about there being guards out there. We hope you enjoyed your fireworks show. People said, uh-uh, Bill, Iraq had the fourth largest army in the world. Yeah, well, maybe, but you know what? After the first three largest armies, there's a real big fucking drop-off, okay? <laughs> the Harry Krishnas are the fifth largest army in the world. And they've already got our airports. So, who is the greater threat? People have bugged me in the States. People said, hey, war made us feel better about ourselves. Really? Who are these people with such low self-esteem? <laughs> they need a war to feel better about themselves. I saw them on the news waving their flags. Could I recommend instead of a war to feel better about yourself, perhaps? Sit-ups? <laughs> Maybe a fruit cup? six to eight glasses of water a day. I'm not telling you how to live. I'm just recommending perhaps a better way to feel better about yourself. <laughs> and we can avoid a conflagration. <laughs> Merely a suggestion. Tell you, get this. I'm down south recently. I'm playing a town called Fife, Alabama. All right? And it's right outside Sputnenburg, for those of y'all who need a <laughs> point of reference. All right. <laughs> Anyway, I'm down there in Fife. They want me to host their annual Ricketts telethon. All right, whatever. It's great to be able to give something back. Anyway, in this town, this is absolutely true. It was in all the papers. It was on CNN. Apparently, everyone in this town saw these UFOs. Everyone in the town saw the UFOs. Police chief, mayor, they all saw the fucking UFOs, all right? And I'm curious, I asked people what it was like. Oh, man, it was incredible, incredible. People came from miles around to look at them. A lot of people came armed. Excuse me? People are bringing shotguns to UFO sightings. Don't you think there's a point where we're going to drop the fucking weapons? I mean, <laughs> the mothership comes. Uh, maybe we don't know everything. <laughs> what? Not like some intergalactic fucking skeet shoot. Ah, there goes one out! <laughs> Bringing shotguns to UFO sightings, man. Kind of brings whole new meaning to that phrase, you ain't from around here, are you, boy? <laughs> yep, they're little green people. We call them boogers. <laughs> so I said to the guy, I go, why do y'all bring shotguns to UFO sightings? He said, well... We don't want to be abducted. I'm thinking, yeah, leave all this. <laughs> Dude, if I lived in this town, I'd be on my hands and knees praying for abduction every fucking day, all right? And I wouldn't be picky. Greyhound. Duck me. I said, what do you mean abducted? He said, well, 
they abduct people and they perform scientific and medical experiments on them. I said, well, maybe we'll be lucky and it's some type of sterility dentistry program they got going. <laughs> maybe they come down, castrate you, straighten your teeth and split. <laughs> sort of a clean up the universe pact. <laughs> he said, huh? And I'll tell you something, too, that's starting to annoy me about UFOs, the fact that they cross galaxies or universes to visit us and always end up in places like Fife fucking Alabama. <laughs> Maybe these aren't super intelligent beings, you know what I mean? Maybe they're like hillbilly aliens. <laughs> Some intergalactic Jode family or something, you know. Don't y'all want to land in New York or L.A.? Nah, we just had a long trip. We're going to kick back and whittle some. <laughs> Oh my God, they're idiots. We're gonna enter our mothership in the tractor pull. <laughs> Last thing I wanna see is a flying saucer up on blocks in front of some trailer, you know? Bumper sticker on it. They'll get my ray gun when they pry my cold dead 18-fingered hand off of it. Oh my God, we're being invaded by rednecks. Get this, another true story. This is gonna frighten you, because it's absolutely true. I'm down in that town Fife. After the show, I go to a Waffle House. I'm not proud of it, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm eating, I'm alone, and I'm reading a book. Waitress walks over to me. Hey, what you reading for? <laughs> Is that like the weirdest question ever? I have never, ever been asked that. You know what I mean? What are you reading? Oh, okay. But what are you reading for? <laughs> Shit, you stumped me. <laughs> Why do I read? I don't read. I don't know. Guess I read for a lot of reasons, you know. And one of them is so I don't end up being a fucking waffle waitress, all right? <laughs> Then this trucker in the next booth gets up, stands over me and goes, well, looks like we got ourselves a reader. <laughs> what the fuck's going on here? Like I walked into a Klan rally in a Boy George outfit or something. It's a fucking book, I read, there I said it. Waitress goes, why read when you can just flip on the tube? Because it's not the same. What do you think I'm reading? Hee-haw the book? She said, huh? So if you've ever been to a Waffle House and you notice that the uh, menu has pictures of the food on it? Yeah. <laughs> it is frightening to know that in many parts of our world right now, people are yelling, revolution, revolution. And in other parts, they're yelling, evolution. <laughs> we want our thumbs. <laughs> it's an insane world, and I'm proud to be part of it. I do smoke. If this bothers anybody, I recommend you looking around the world in which we live and shut in your fucking mouth. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> how many, uh, oh, 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 quickly, how many non-smokers are here tonight? Non-smokers, by round of applause. Let's hear non-smokers. Good. Because I have something I want to tell you, and I'm glad you've all conglomerated here tonight. Save me some breath, which is obviously very short. 
I love, I'm going to tell you non-smokers something right now that I know for a fact you don't know, and I delight in telling my brothers things they don't know, particularly when they're true, which this is. Ready? Non-smokers. Ready? Drum roll. Non-smokers die every day. <laughs> Sleep tight. <laughs> you see, I know you entertain some type of eternal life fantasy <laughs> because you've chosen not to smoke. Let me be the first to <laughs> pop that fucking bubble and send you hurtling back to reality. You're dead, too. And you know what doctors say, shit, if only you'd smoked, we'd have the technology to help you. <laughs> you people dying from nothing that are screwed. I got all sorts of neat shit waiting for me. Oxygen lung, tent, just like going to sharper image when I die. <laughs> yeah, people say the stupidest things too. Hey, you quit smoking and you get your sense of smell back. I live in New York City. I don't want my sense of smell. <laughs> Is that urine? <laughs> I think I smell a dead fella. <laughs> Anyone remember this? This is pretty weird. Anyone remember when Yul Brenner died and came out with that commercial after he was dead? You remember that? I'm Yul Brenner, and I'm dead now. What the fuck's this guy selling? <laughs> I'm Yul Brenner and I'm dead now because I smoke cigarettes. <laughs> Pretty scary, but they could have done that with anybody, man. Guy in the States, this guy Jim Fix was a health nut, runner, jogger, wrote books about jogging, had a heart attack while jogging and died. <laughs> They should have done that commercial with that guy. I'm Jim Fix, and I'm dead now. And I don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> I jogged every day, ate nothing but tofu. I'm dead. Yul Brenner smoked, drank, and got laid every night of his life. He's dead. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Yul Brenner smoking, drinking, girls are sitting on his cue ball noggin every night of his life. <clears throat> but I know what you non-smokers are thinking right now. That's real cute, Bill. That's real cute. That's a cute little smoking thing you just did. And we want you to keep doing it, son, while you still have the breath left in you to do it. That is my big fear in life, doing smoking jokes in my act, you know, then showing up five years from now. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Remember me? I was wrong. Smoking is real fucking bad for you. No joke. I've seen people do that. You ever seen anyone do that? Is that the spookiest fucking thing you've ever seen? You ever seen that? Is that unbelievable? If you're smoking out of a hole in your fucking neck, I'd think about quitting. Wouldn't you? I mean, at that point, chew some gum or something. I'm not, I'm not telling you how to live. I'm recommending use your options. This shows a commitment I cannot fucking relate to, man. I mean, we're beyond image at that point, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, what's next for that guy, you know? I just can't stop. <laughs> it gets worse and worse every year. 
I'm telling you, man, I can't quit. I cannot quit smoking. They're starting to taste like shit. Dude, you have a cigarette in your butt. May I recommend Nicorette gum? I'm Bill Hicks, and I'm dead now, because I smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes didn't kill me. A bunch of non-smokers kicked the shit out of me one night. I tried to run. They had more energy than I. I tried to hide. They heard me wheezing. But now I'm in heaven, sniffing Yule Brenner's noggin. Woo! Party time! Can you imagine being in heaven with Yul Brenner, me and Yul Brenner, right? And Jim Fix is there, and we're comparing our lives. Hey, Yul, remember that one night we got so fucked up, and we got laid, and all those girls were fucking them? <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Jim, what about you? <laughs> well, one night I ate too much tofu, and then went jogging. Yeah, great. Um, anyway. <laughs> Oh, man, it just, I know it's nasty, but I'm addicted, all right? And it tastes so good, too. It's a shame it's that secondary smoke that stinks so bad, because the stuff we're sucking up is fucking great, man. <laughs> mm, mm. Steak and potatoes. Lobster. <laughs> Yule Brenner's noggin. <laughs> I'm a heavy smoker. I go through about two lighters a day now. And, uh, <laughs> is that a lot? You can't imagine how thrilled I was, any smoker, to be, to find out there's a different warning on each pack. Mine say, warning, smoking may cause fetal injury or premature birth. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Found my brand. Just don't get the ones that say lung cancer, you know. <laughs> Shop around. It is your body. Yeah, give me a card and a low birth weight. <laughs> I'll put it out. No one knows what pornography is. That's the problem. Supreme Court of the United States says pornography is any act that has no artistic merit and causes sexual thought. That's their definition. No artistic merit causes sexual thoughts. Hmm. Boy, that sounds like every commercial on television to me. <laughs> you know, when I see those two twins on that double mint commercial, I'm almost embarrassed to tell you all this. Uh, I'm not thinking of gum. <laughs> Double your pleasure. <laughs> yeah, honey, where's the Wrigley's? <laughs> I feel like chewing something. <laughs> what day? Doesn't every commercial blatantly use sex to sell the product? I believe most of them do. Here is the commercial they'd like to do, I guarantee you. We may see this one day yet, but this is the ultimate television commercial they want to do. Here's the woman's face, beautiful. Camera pulls back, naked breast. Camera pulls back, she's totally naked. Legs apart, <laughs> two fingers right here. And it just says, drink Coke. <laughs> now, I don't know the connection here. But Coke is on my shopping list this week. <laughs> so, Snickers. Dr. Pepper. <laughs> no, I don't know the connection. Yes, I am buying these products. <laughs> my teeth are rotten out of my head. I'm glued to my television. More Snickers, more Coke. <laughs> More Snickers, more Coke. 
But you see, once again, my voice, the voice was not heard. My voice was not heard. The questions were not asked that I wanted to see asked. And once again, the issue just went berserk. Pornography causes sexual thoughts. No one asked these four questions. Yeah, and so what? <laughs> when did sex become a bad thing? D did I miss a meeting? Bill, we had a big vote. Fucking's out. You were asleep. <laughs> Can I still vote? Playboy, pornography causes sexual thought. Penthouse, pornography causes sexual thought. Madonna videos, pornography causes sexual thoughts. You know what causes sexual thoughts? I'm going to clear the air for you tonight. I'm going to end this debate, hopefully, once and for all while on this planet, because outer space awaits our presence. We are better and more unique creatures than this, and uh, all eternity is our playground. So let me go ahead and clear this one issue up once and for all, and let's move on to real issues. Can we? Great. <laughs> Here's what causes sexual thoughts. You ready? Drum roll. <laughs> Having a dick. <laughs> or if you're a woman, having, you know, but whatever. I'm speaking for me tonight. And I can speak for every guy in this room tonight, too. <laughs> Guys, in the course of our day, anything can cause a sexual fucking thought. <laughs> you could be on a bus, a trolley, it's rocking kind of nice. <laughs> Pants are a little tight. Oh, my God, I'm getting a Woody. I'm getting a Woody on a bus. What are we going to do, ban public transportation? Before Playboy, before Penthouse, before pornographic movies or Madonna videos ever existed, people still had sexual thoughts, OK? How do you know that? We're here. Somebody's been fucking. You follow your family tree back at every branch? <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> True, what caused it way back then? Well, maybe the wagon train ride out west. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I don't know what she has under that gingham skirt, but when we stop for water, baby, we're fucking. <laughs> I got a woody on the tree. You see, they're getting the cart before the horse on this pornography issue. Playboy does not create sexual thoughts. There are sexual thoughts, and therefore, there is Playboy. Don't you see? <laughs> I know these sound like wild philosophical musings here. What came first, the hard-on or the Madonna video? Uh, <laughs> and if a hard-on falls in the forest and no one's around, <laughs> do you go blind? I don't know. And what does an atheist scream when they come? That's another one, too. <laughs> oh, chemical chance, chemical chance! What, what would you, if you were an atheist, what would you yell? Oh, fate, fate and destiny, fate and destiny. <laughs> chemical chance, chemical chance. Big bang! <laughs> I'm getting that close to hell right now. <laughs> it's getting a little warm. You know what, though? I find it ironic that people who are against things that cause sexual thoughts are generally fundamentalist Christians who also believe you should be fruitful and multiply. Isn't that weird? Don't you think they'd be for things that cause sexual thoughts? You know what I mean? Maybe even a centerfold in the Bible? <laughs> I don't know. Miss Deuteronomy? Turn offs, floods, locusts, and smokers. <laughs> Turn ons, myrrh. I don't know what myrrh is. Chicks dig it. Back to my room, baby. I got some myrrh. <laughs> <coughs> I did that joke in Alabama. These three rednecks met me after the show. Hey, buddy, come here. Hey, Mr. Comedian, come here. Yeah, I love that move. Come here. <laughs> you 
not a physics major. <laughs> I think that's a safe bet. Mr. Funny Man, come here. <laughs> hey, buddy, we're Christians. We don't like what you said. I said, then forgive me. <laughs> Later, when I was hanging from the tree, <laughs> just hanging next to this old green fella. <laughs> Christians who kill. Ah, oh, we're about out of ideas on this planet, aren't we? So I love people like George Bush, or this guy Pat Robertson, this televangelist in the state. These are Christians for stronger nuclear armament. Oh, what a great deal of faith. Because I know if Jesus were here, he'd probably have an Uzi on him. Don't you think he would? Jesus? Yeah, he would. The Prince of Peace is back, but he's pissed off. <laughs> Fuck you, pilot. <laughs> I'm back. I didn't tell you what kind of mood I was coming back in. Did I, fuckers? <laughs> Y'all, it's Jesus. He's back. But he's pissed. He's yelling something about the cross. I didn't catch it. <laughs> Jesus. You know, I don't know what y'all believe, and I don't really care. But you have to admit, beliefs are odd. A lot of Christians wear crosses around their necks. Do you think when Jesus comes back, he ever wants to see a fucking cross? <laughs> it's kind of like going up to Jackie Onassis with a little sniper rifle pendant, you know? <laughs> hey, Jackie, just thinking of John. <laughs> we loved him. Okay, it's time for some, uh, a time for a question. This question I'm going to ask you is very crude. <laughs> Are there actually women in the world who do not like to give blowjobs? <laughs> See a lot of guys on dates got their fingers crossed here tonight. <laughs> Answer him, honey. Go ahead. Let's, let's hear how you feel about this right now. Go ahead, speak up. Let's hear. The reason I ask, all right, I was with this woman one time, and she goes down here for like three seconds and starts coming back up. And I'm going, Unless you're getting up to put ice in your mouth. <laughs> anyway, without getting graphic, <laughs> she actually said to me, I think you've had enough. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I think you've had enough. Really? <laughs> I think you're going to know when I've had that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a pretty definite ending to this. <laughs> Not a lot of gray area. <laughs> Barely cut and dry. But anyway, it blew my mind, and it's all it blew. So I've been inquiring from audiences. <laughs> Why people, and I'm not asking women, why people in general don't do everything with their lover? I can't, I can't conceive of that. I don't understand it. I hear complaints on both sides. Oh, they didn't do that. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. But why, let's just specific, get more specific, you ladies, don't do, won't, I mean, don't, I mean, not all of you, but why won't you do that to your guy? I mean, and make that, I don't know, the focal point of your existence while on this planet. 
you know what I mean. I mean, why wouldn't you want to do that? Every second you're away. I mean, you know, why don't you? You know. I don't understand why you, that's... Uh, you know. I actually, uh, a woman one night yelled out, yeah, you ever try it? I said, yeah. <laughs> Almost broke my back. <laughs> it's that one vertebrae, I swear to God. It's that close. I think that vertebrae is going to be the thing to go in our next evolutionary step. <laughs> Just a theory and a fervent prayer. Yeah, now all the guys are going, honey, I have no idea what he's talking about. I think he's a devil child. That may be true, but guys, you know what I'm talking about. I can speak for every guy here in this room tonight. Guys, if you could blow yourselves, ladies, you'd be in this room alone right now, watching an empty stage. My folks are proud of me. <laughs> Bill, honey, you still doing that suck your own cock, Bill? <laughs> yeah, Mom. Good, baby. That's such a crowd pleaser. <laughs> How clever are you to come up with a suck your own cock bit, honey? <laughs> You're so clever, it makes your mama's bosom swell with pride. <laughs> knowing her son is traveling the world using his given surname going up in front of rooms of total strangers and doing the suck your own cock piece. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. No biggie. <laughs> so I asked this woman who said that, you ever try it? I said, let me ask you, why don't you like to do that to your guy? Because it's disgusting. <laughs> disgusting? <laughs> well, that's a little harsh. <laughs> and also a double standard, because you know what? I've never heard you ladies say it's disgusting. When we're down between your legs, <laughs> gnawing away. <laughs> oh, this is so gross. <laughs> I'm going to throw up. <laughs> oh, don't put your finger in my Oh, that's rude. <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> and again, maybe I can't hear it because your thighs are clamped. people at Sunday school ask me when you're going to be performing in the area. <laughs> Bill, they all are so curious to see the material you're doing now. And they're all sure they want to see the suck your own cock bit followed by the eat the pussy sketch. <laughs> Bill, I only wish your grandparents were still alive. <laughs> If only you hadn't put him in that Chuck Norris film, baby. <laughs> I wish to God your grandparents could see their grandson on stage using his given surname, performing the suck the own cock bit plus the pussy eating sketch. <laughs> Maybe they're hearing it in heaven, Mom. You think? <laughs> Son, is there any way I could ask you to type up the suck your own cock bit? 
And so I could pin it to your grandmama's headstone. <laughs> See, I just don't agree with everything I hear just because I hear it over the TV. <laughs> Sometimes I got to ask myself what I feel about things. That way I can get a closer reading of what's true. Drugs have done good things for us. That's my belief. Drugs have done good things for us. Hard to believe I'm saying this. Drugs have done good things for us. What do you mean, Bill? Well, if you don't believe drugs have done good things for us, do me a favor then. Go home tonight, take all your albums, your tapes, and your CDs, and burn them. Because you know what? The musicians who made that great music that has enhanced your lives throughout the years, real fucking high on drugs, okay? <laughs> The Beatles were so high, they let Ringo sing a couple of tunes, man. <laughs> Tell me they weren't partying. <laughs> we all live in a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine. We, we, what, we all live in a yellow sub, you know how fucking high they were? <laughs> they had to pull Ringo off the ceiling with a rake to sing that fucking song. <laughs> Tom, get Ringo, he's in the corner, pull him down. Wow, look at him scoot, grab him. Look at him scoot, with Ringo come down. If Yoko's gone, we can party again. <laughs> they were real high, they wrote great music, drugs had a positive effect. They did, you cannot deny the fucking music. Can't deny it, can't deny it. Okay, I'll look, let's look at it another way then. These musicians today, who don't do drugs and in fact speak out against them, we're rock against drugs. Boy, they suck. <laughs> Ballless, soulless, spiritless, little corporate fucking puppets, suckers of Satan's cock, each and every one of them. <laughs> who sell Pepsi-Cola products. <laughs> We're rock stars who sell Taco Bell products. <laughs> Let me tell you something right now, and you can print this in stone, and don't you ever forget it. Any, any performer that ever sells a product on television is for now and all eternity removed from the artistic world. I don't care if you shit Mona Lisa's out of your ass on cue. <laughs> You've made your fucking choice. Oh, come on, it's just, it's just a good product and it's just making a good... <laughs> Shut that big scaly pecker down your mouth. Shut it! Is there a doctor in the house? Here's my point, and man, I knew I had a point again. I keep having points tonight, what's the deal? It's odd how people think, and people get away with it, I don't get it. Last year in the States, I don't know if you ever heard this story, this is a great one, I love this one, this kills me. You know the story about the two kids that were big fans of this group, Judas Priest, and they committed suicide, and the parents of these two kids sued the band, Judas Priest. Okay, first of all, <laughs> two kids, big fans of Judas Priest, commit suicide. Wow. Two less gas station attendants in the world, you know. <laughs> what? I don't mean to sound cruel here, but I don't think we lost a cancer cure here, you know. <laughs> Look, there's going to be no delays in the shuttle launch because of this. You understand? They, they weren't that an integral part. No, no, Bill, you sound so cruel. Fuck them. They were idiots. Get it? Okay. <laughs> but the point is, they tried to prove that there are subliminal messages on these albums telling you to kill yourself. 
Let me ask you a quick question, which, by the way, failed to come up at the trial, which they had. What performer wants his fucking audience dead? I don't get the long-term game here. What are these guys in the band thinking? I'm fighting sick of it. I'm fighting sick of it. Sick of it. What are you sick of? The whole fighting thing. Touring, making $40,000 a night. Free drugs, free booze, stretch limos, penthouse suites. Groupies blowing me down to dusk. <laughs> I'm in a rut and I want out. <laughs> I know we have all those shows coming up. I know it sucks. <laughs> Unless. <laughs> Ian, Nigel, come in. Oh shit, Nigel, get Ian. Ian, come down. I've had an idea. Let's kill the fucking audience. <laughs> Nigel, go get a soccer ball. Ian, come here. <laughs> We're going to kill them. We can, we can go back to our day jobs. We can sell shoes again. Why would they fucking do that? Why would the band do that? Why? Because it's not a band, Bill, Mr. Dressed in Black. Say fuck every other word out of your mouth, cynical humanist you. It's the devil. <laughs> oh, well, that's different. <laughs> the devil. That, that still exists, that concept? Real, does it really exist still, the devil? A devil really exists? Does it really, y'all? Well, tell me something. What could oppose God's will? <laughs> Nothing, could it? <laughs> this is a delightful little realization. <laughs> Nothing could oppose God's will. Not nothing. What about my will? <laughs> no. Okay. Remember a few years ago? Remember a few years ago, as if you played albums backwards, there were satanic messages? Now they're subliminal. Isn't it nice to know Satan's keeping up with all these new technological achievements? What a little busy beaver he is. I picture him at Radio Shack every Monday morning. What new things do you have for me today? Remember that a few years ago? You play albums backwards, they're satanic messages. Let me tell you something. If you ever sat around playing your albums backwards, you are Satan. <laughs> don't look any further. And don't go ruining my stereo to prove a fucking point. Come here, listen, listen. <laughs> Satan is Lord, Satan is Lord. Amen, it's crystal clear. Check this out. It's almost like he's in the room or something. <laughs> ah, you're Satan! <laughs> Satan, destroyer of needles, ruiner of stereos. I am Satan, and I have come to destroy high fidelity music. You will all listen to eight tracks. Ah, the deceiver! Because <laughs> I have news for you. I live in the States, a very puritanical uh, place, uh, full of superstition and ancient, ancient religions that no longer serve their function on this planet because they're based on fear instead of love. But uh, they say rock and roll is the devil's music. Well, let's say that it is. I got news for you. Let's say that rock and roll is the devil's music, and we know it for a fact to be absolutely, unequivocally true. Boy, at least he fucking jams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you hear that correctly? If it's a choice between eternal hell and good tunes or eternal heaven and new kids on the fucking block, I'm going to be surfing on the lake of fire, rocking out. 
high-fiving Satan every time I pass him on the fucking shore. Because you know, if you play New Kids on the Block albums backwards, they sound better, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, Bill, they're the New Kids. Don't pick on them, they're so good, they're so clean-cut, and they're such a good image for the children. Fuck that. When did mediocrity and banality become a good image for your children? I want my children to listen to people who fucking rocked. I don't care if they died in puddles of their own vomit. I want someone who plays from his fucking heart. Mommy, mommy, the man Bill told me to listen to has a blood bubble on his nose. Shut up and listen to him play. The new kids. Ah, we're the new kids. We're still good and clean. <laughs> We're so clean cut. You ho, ho, ho! A good clean country. Ho, ho, ho! and I love, I love being here and you've been excellent all week and uh, this has been absolutely the best thus far. All my point is, all my point is, is there's a lot of ways to look at the world. You know what I'm saying? Why pick the way you learn over TV? Because it's usually wrong. You ever see a good drug story on the news? Never. News is supposed to be objective, isn't it? It's supposed to be the news. But every drug story is negative. Well, hold it. I've had some killer fucking times on drugs. Let's hear the whole story. Same LSD story every time, and we've all heard it. Young man on acid, thought he could fly, jumped out of a building. What a tragedy. What a dick. <laughs> he thought he could fly. Why didn't he take off the ground and check it out first? <laughs> You don't see ducks lined up to catch elevators to fly south. He's an idiot. He's dead. Good. I mean, there's one less moron in the world? Wow, what a fucking tragedy, huh? I guess I'm one car linked up in traffic tomorrow. <clears throat> How about a positive LSD story? That would be newsworthy, don't you think? Anybody think that just once to hear a positive LSD story? Today, a young man on acid realized that all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration, that we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death. Life is only a dream, and we are the imagination of ourselves. Here's Tom with the weather. <laughs> you guys are great. Thank you very much. Good night.